How's everybody doing today? You holding up? Yeah! That's, that's good. Hey, Ron Buckley, how you doing? You made it. Where's that red, where's that pumpkin shirt? <laughs> it's not recording. Okay. Hey, and we got Ozzy here from over in uh, our European friend, the bootlegger. The best bootlegs in all of Europe, right? And uh, you have a website? Because we want to give it to ICE. <laughs> you know, for the RICO Act. So, uh, I, are we going to do a Q&A? Is that what we're doing? Or what are we doing? Because obviously, I'd rather talk about what people want to talk about and answer their questions. Well, how about this? How about I ask you a couple questions first? Did you have a good time this weekend? The food was, a, food was amazing. I'm sorry, guys. It's amazing. It was, it's, it's, amazing. Brooklyn. it's amazing. It's amazing that you can call it food. No, just kidding. Tell them what happened to your tooth. How about that? Tell them what happened to your tooth. Why you couldn't eat? No, I broke my tooth on Friday right before I came here. So I told him, I said, I have to be careful what I eat. And because I can only chew on one side of my mouth and I have to eat softer food. But they don't care about that. <laughs> well, I do because you make me feel bad. But who got you burritos? Yeah. Kevin Gandler. <laughs> right? But did you have a good time otherwise? I mean, it was this? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, think every time you get to be around Kiss fans are always great because everybody's so. I mean, sometimes people, you guys act nervous, and I was thinking, why is everybody acting nervous? There's no reason to be nervous. We're just all people kind of sharing a common interest, if you will. So. Well, there you go. So. Um, there's still a bunch of people there, which is awesome, and um, we're going to do a Q&A now, because it keeps it going, and there's a lot of you, and I want a lot of questions. Question. So let's start with this gentleman. What you're going to do is you're going to come forward, and we're going to go from there. Your name? You don't have the wireless mic? <laughs> I guess not. Cheapskate. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, my name is Matt. I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, when you were asked to put on the makeup again, uh, what went through your mind? When I was asked to put on, but that was like a double question. I mean, when I was asked to put on the makeup originally, or can you say again? Yeah. What do you mean again? Let's just say originally. Okay. Well, the first when they first that was in 2001, yeah. and that kind of happened just kind of out of out of left field. So I was actually in Japan at a Kiss Expo like this with Keith Larue, and I literally had called, you know, this was before everybody had cell phones to be able to call internationally, so I called my, I remember I checked my answer machine, we were in Japan and we were getting ready to go to Thailand. Um, so I thought I better check my answer machine and my lawyer had called and said, hey, you need to call me right away. So I called him, literally we were checking out the hotel lobby in the morning going to the airport and he said, oh, Kiss wants you, you know, to come back and, and play and they're going to have you wear makeup. Thank you. And um, I was... On my, I said, well, I'm on my way to Thailand right now. And he said, well, just go to Thailand. When you get back in, you know, in a week, everything will be sorted out. And I remember I asked him, I said, so what makeup are they going to have me wear? And he said, I don't know. They don't know. They haven't decided. So they didn't even, I think they weren't even sure what they were going to do because they didn't come to an agreement with Peter, you know, to be honest with you, which you guys all knew that anyways. And um, so when I got home Saturday at the end of the week, I called him and he said, yeah, they're just going to have you wear the cat makeup. And that, so they, evidently in that five or six day period, that was what they decided. And I went into a, um, to a photo session, you know, because I had never put the makeup on. I didn't know how, I didn't know the process. So Tommy and Paul were there and they showed me, there's my phone. They were showing me how to do it. And uh, basically I, uh, you know, did a photo session, they took that photo and they used it as an insert in the tour book and then they, this was for Australia and Japan, and they sent all, they told all the promoters that Eric Singer's going to be playing drums, they switched the posters, because a lot of people, you know, over here always thought, oh, those guys didn't tell anybody and they, you know, were, you know, basically hoodwinking the fans and, the, and that that's not what happened. They told the promoters, they actually took the posters down in Australia and photoshopped me into a new poster and put new posters up. So everybody knew what was going on. There was no lying or bait and switch and all that. So, But that's kind of what happened. I think that they probably didn't know what to do at first or there was probably really no time to create a new character because they literally had to make this decision when once they made that choice and they figured it's going to be easier to just do it this way. So. And here we are, 15 years later. Yeah! Who's next? Okay, Phil, you've been good for questions all day. Oh, 
want to thank you for coming here and spending your time with us. You're not and related to Vinny Gonzalez, are you? <laughs> really? No, Vinny Gonzalez. So, I am Italian, not Gonzalez is Spanish. <laughs> well, he's half Italian. Okay, well, I'm right? a full, I'm a full Italian. <laughs> okay. I, 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 no, I'm not a uh, really Italian. But I want to thank you for the resurrection and keeping the legend of uh, Kiss alive for us. Because without you, that this whole Kiss experience wouldn't be here today, you know. Yeah. Thank you for that. Well, you know, I, very I, honorable. I, I want to say thank you, know, but at the ways. same time, you know, <laughs> if I didn't do it, somebody, if somebody else wasn't here, it'd be. I mean, if it wasn't me, it'd be somebody else. I've always been very uh, realistic but about that. But you were that. very gracious about the whole situation with the reunion tour. You didn't have to handle it in that uh, manner. So I want to, I want to give well, you that. Well, you don't really have a choice. One thing I learned is you may not like some of the things. Right. Some sort of the things that happen, but at the same time, you may also, you know, you, you know, I always figure you don't burn bridges. You know, yeah. even if you get mad at people, you know, there's no reason to burn bridges because, like, like, you never know what what the future holds. And my theory held true because then they asked me to a, a few different times, as you know, this is my third go around with the band. So. Um, I've always kept a good relationship with Gene and Paul, even though I don't always agree with some of the choices they make or the, right. the way they choose to do certain things. But that's okay; it's their band. Like Gene always told me, "You want to do things your own way, then you go start your own band." And right. you know something? He's right. Mm -hmm. But he's like, in their opinion, it's their band, and they're going to do it the way they want to do it. And they're not going to let other people try to tell them how to run their business. And I think that we all have to respect that some of you may own your own businesses and you probably have employees that start trying to tell you how they think you should be running your business and you probably go, uh, no. <laughs> well, the real question was, and we want to try to find out today, which we don't know whether or not you're going to give us anything on it, but we want, we want some juice on it, is new material with KISS. Are you guys in the studio or planning on going into the studio to make a new KISS so, you know, that's all right. That's all right. So, you almost said it. Solo's good, though. I thought that would be a good idea, too. But, you know, a new uh, studio record. You know, it gets a little nervous on people. Here. You know, I, I, I wish we would, and I, would, I hope we do. So I'm going to keep an open mind, and that there's always maybe the possibility. But it hasn't been discussed. You know, Gene would say one thing, then Paul's like, oh, we're not, well, I don't have any interest in making a record because nobody buys records, nobody seems to care. But I think I've read. Didn't Paul say something not that long ago? But now he seems to be receptive to it. So when I was, when I heard that, he didn't say anything. I just read it in an interview. So I thought, okay, then maybe he's having a change of heart. Because it does take a lot of time and work to make a record. When people are younger, you got to remember when bands first start off, usually their first record, they've been working for a long time before they all of a sudden they go in the studio and bang it out really quickly. But most of the time they've been honing that those those songs and that material for a long period of time. And, you know, you have a, a lot of energy to keep, have an outpouring of creativity when you're younger. Then all of a sudden they get sidetracked with families, kids, and just life in general, and all that. You know, you, you, you talk to most people that are older, they'll probably tell you that it's hard for them to come up with a bunch of new songs. When, when they were younger, they could come up at, you know, the blink of an eye. But you never know what'll, if it'll happen. That's, I guess, the answer to your question. But uh, we'll see. You're welcome.